Have you ever wanted to become an esteemed member of the Merchant's Guild? Have you ever yearned to exploit famine and plagues for profit? Have you ever wanted to personally control the entire supply of alcoholic beverages in the European Union? Patrician 3 Rise of the Hands promises all of this and more. Developed in 2000 by the now defunct German developer Ascaron Entertainment, Patrician 3 is a trading simulator and city management game, or more accurately, a calculator wearing a GUI. Upon starting up the game, you're going to need to pick a starting town somewhere in the cold, hard, unforgiving wastelands of Northern Europe. I recommend Stockholm because, as we all know, the common Swede is poor, desolate, and ripe to hire into a life of working in my iron manufactories. Alternatively, I also recommend Cologne as it is the only city in the entirety of the game capable of manufacturing and exporting wine. Pick your name, your starting town, and your difficulty settings, and you're spawned into the game with nothing but a tiny bag of inheritance money, a small company office, and a canoe filled with a handful of drunken lunatics. From here, you only have one objective. Make money. Money is primarily made by using your ships and offices to facilitate trade. Goods can be bought for low prices where they are in abundance, and sold for high prices where they are in demand. For instance, Every town needs a steady supply of food to keep its population alive and growing. Many towns require a stream of imported raw materials to manufacture finished products, construct ships, and build new structures. And every town has an aristocratic elite willing to pay top dollar for luxury commodity. Patrician 3 has no standardized rule for pricing. It takes quite a bit of playtime before you start to get a handle on what, where, and when to buy or to sell. I have gone bankrupt in more than one playthrough, including while playing the tutorial. As you get the hang of trading, eventually you'll want to expand. Micromanaging a fleet of ships and offices will get extremely tedious very quickly. Luckily, we can pay someone else to do it for us. I recommend checking every tavern in every town until you find your first captain. For a weekly payroll, he'll be happy to lead ships and convoys on custom automated trade routes. You can also head into your trading office and hire a warehouse manager. For another chunk of your profits, this miser will watch the fluctuation of the markets and buy or sell only at the price limits you dictate. When it comes to your first auto trade route, I recommend taking a high value, high demand item like iron goods from Stockholm and setting your warehouse manager to purchase as much as your warehouse can fit at the lowest possible price. Then, have your captain sell these goods at a guaranteed profit, circling from town to town until his hold is empty. Rinse, repeat again and again, and watch the fat stacks start to flow in. As the game continues to progress, more options and expenses will present themselves quickly. Anywhere there's money, there's criminals. As the volume of trade in the world grows, so too will the incentive to turn pirate. Quickly, you may find your lone vulnerable ships captured or plundered, and the loss is impossible to recuperate. For this reason, it is imperative that your money-making captains sail with convoys as soon as possible. Transform your lone dinghies into full Kriegsmarine wolf packs with a heavy retinue of cannons and swords in tow to ensure the safety of your company and its employees. Competition from other traders is also a real factor. Other people in the world have more ships, more money, more political power, and more land than you, and all are vying for the same market. If you're feeling immoral, you too can go to the tavern and hand over one of your warships to a local pirate captain, who will in return plunder your competitors, giving you a contractual share of the profits. Or you can simply choose to raise the black flag yourself. Be forewarned, however, heavy piracy can ruin the population growth and production of the world, and if you or your pirate captains are ever caught in the act, heavy punishment and a permanent negative reputation are waiting for you. Catastrophe can strike all over the world, and it comes with a huge possibility for loss or profit. The global military is commanded by an enigmatic figure known only as the Prince, who both can be used as a dumping ground for excess product, and can arrive with amassed forces to besiege any town in the world. Watch as the tiny local militia crumbles, any hinterland production is destroyed, and the town treasury is looted dry. If the town is cut off from food for too long, it will enter a period of famine and rapid depopulation. Luckily for us, a starving population is willing to pay almost anything for a bite to eat. 
Load your vessels with beer, grain, meat, and fish, and watch the gold coins pile up as the local markets clamor for every last scrap. Another way of making money is by becoming a banker. The local moneylender has a constant stream of requests for loans, which you can graciously grant, set an interest rate, and turn a profit on. Granting an endless number of very low interest, high risk loans is an amazing strategy to pump capital into the markets and raise your reputation as an upstanding merchant. If any of your clients inevitably fail to pay you back, don't worry. You can recuperate your losses by impounding everything they own, filling your office with goods and your fleet with ships. Eventually, as your ambition grows, you'll want to expand your operations, expand your influence, and expand your profits. You can start constructing buildings. Houses make room for a growing town population and can potentially give you a nice monthly rent. Raw materials and manufacturing building can produce more goods than the local markets alone could ever supply. And the donation of municipal buildings such as roads, wells, schools, mints, and hospitals provide bonuses to the town and massive increase in political standing. If you're doing well for yourself, soon you'll get the chance to do what everyone dreams of. Pay exorbitant fees to join the local merchant's guild, giving you access to lucrative overseas trade, a bond of fraternity and liberty with all of the other aristocratic elite, privilege to exclusive auctions, and, most importantly, the ability to enter politics. Once you join the guild and acquire enough wealth and public reputation, you'll achieve the rank of counselor. A true aristocrat, you'll gain the ability to propose legislation and vote with your town council, to declare candidacy and vote in the election of the town's lord mayor, and most importantly to vote in the Hanseatic Council, also known as the European Parliament. Move quickly to protect your interests by expanding the local military sharply cutting taxes, and bribing your political allies in the hot steam of the public bath. If you find there's just not enough money to be made in Northern Europe, you can also make massive profits by sending expeditions into the world. Sell your goods in France, Spain, Italy, Turkey, and Africa. Explore westward and become the first to discover the Americas, and watch your ships return laden with gold, spices, and native genocide. Once you become elected Lord Mayor, you can personally gain control of the local military and a direct line of communication with the Aldermen of the Haines. You can undertake executive contracts to construct entirely new cities, new trade routes, and to hunt down pirates. And you can begin your plot to finally achieve the rank of Alderman and rule the world. Overall, Patrician 3 is a strange and very forgotten game. It's a relic of another era. Mechanics seem deceptively simple, but present a real challenge in mastering. The graphics can be crude, the CGI is kind of jank, but the aesthetic is oddly charming and sets a strong and very warm tone. The trading systems really are not optimized and can be annoying to use, but when you do finally tweak your offices and convoys just right and your gold finally starts to climb, the satisfaction and sense of constant progression is wonderful. All in all, for $2.50 on Steam, I've gotten dozens of hours of fun out of Patrician 3, and I highly recommend downloading it and giving it a try.